Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. Imagine they all do that. What was that knocking? Well, that's the, that was the mirror. But why did it go, because they all do it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know why they do it. Boys and girls, welcome to the latest Rate My Ride instalment here on the Behind the Glass podcast. Uh, this week, we are testing back to back two, I would say bargain, performance wagons. A 2014 B8 Audi RS4, I think it's a 2013, it's a C63 estate. It's, it's an equivalent to this. <laughs> it's an equivalent Mercedes C63 yeah. estate. We'll find out more when we get into the Mercedes. We're kicking things off here in this RS4 because, well, we chose to drive this first. Uh, we've got to give a huge shout out to the owner of these two cars, father and son pair, Alex and Tim, who've driven them down here to Gravelwood car sales for Tony and I to check out. We've been speaking quite a lot about, well, this era, this generation, Audi RS4, but also sort of performance, bargain performance cars recently. Well, you, you've you've hinted about buying one of these. Well, ones. I'm sort of in the market. This is kind of the kind of thing that I would look at. You can find these BA RS4s for circa 20, 25 grand these days. Not for that's a good one though, no? Well, okay, a, a really good one is 30. Like a really good one is 30. I think that's quite a lot of car for the money. I think that's unbelievable in terms of what I mean as well. If this car was 60 odd grand new, it's only ever lost 50% of its value. Yeah. And it ain't losing any money now. That's it, it's done. And we speak about it a lot. You know, Audi RS products in this country just seem to hold their money do, incredibly yeah. well. So I know that this car was bought 2022 for 28 grand. It's got 72,000 miles on the clock. I don't think Alex has put 50,000 miles on the clock in the last. 18 months no so you know it's they're not cars that you know they're not what's called garage queens no 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 that's not what they're for though is it they're used and, yeah. and the fact that as you say they retain the value is quite bad so it means that realistically you could get into yes an audi rs wagon for circa 25 grand and use it over the next two to three years and potentially lose five ish grand maybe five or six grand mm. compared to getting a brand new Audi RS4 for close to 80 grand these I bet, days. I bet they're, well, they do a bit of con, a dealer contribution on them, but I bet they're still 65, 70 for a nearly new one. I and mean, you know, it's a big difference, right? This, as I said, I think this represents, and it's cool and it's a good look and big old V8. I was just about to say it's got a proper engine in it. Got a proper <laughs> engine. So I'm just gonna turn the air conditioning down because we are recording a podcast here. This is what I love, right? So here we are in a, 10 year old Audi, all of this infotainment, it is just shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're wrong. It not only looks, I think, fairly up to date, it is so easy to figure out and use. I just knew straight away how to control all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they but were ahead of their time back in the day with way this. Way ahead of their time. Way ahead of their yeah, time. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and apart from some elements of the screen, I, st I still think the design language, as I say, this could be a new car. Mm. It really could be in here, which is, that's a big win. And there are several buttons, but they're not like, it's not like a McCann. No, it's not a thousand it's buttons. It's not a thousand button. You've got your nav button, your telephone button, and your menu, and then your your scroller for your entertainment, radio, media, and, and then some climate control buttons, and that's about it. That's mate. about it. There's yeah. still a big old screen, which I'm sure you could put Apple CarPlay in with a clever chip in the back. 100% but... you could, yeah. Anyway, let's go for a drive, because that's what we're here to do today. So, Tony is driving first out of the uh, the Gravelwood Industrial Estate. Wave goodbye to the guys. It's the last time they're gonna see their car in one piece. Well, because uh, you're driving it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you're gonna have to basically convince me during most of today to not buy either one of these cars, because as I say, for me, as, a, as an F-Pace SVR replacement, it's something that I could actually you know, see in my life. This has been a strong contender. They did a Nagaro edition, one of these, yeah. right up my street, mate, blue on blue, total vibe. Um, but what, what are your memories of or experiences with these cars? Because there are a few things which 
well, hold people back from launching into ownership? Um, well, suspension was a big thing, but suspension was a problem when they were new. So this is it. So it's dynamic ride control. Correct. Which are basically what? The magnetic dampers, essentially. Yeah, it's basically magnetic filings in the suspension. And when you press a button, magnetic forces inside pull the magnets together. Firm everything up. Yeah. But it didn't work. No, it did work, but it was very clunky. Okay. That was the problem. And I used to, my car used to keep going back. Because I used to say something wrong with the expansion, the suspension. It was, it was like drop links were... Um, knocking. Knocking. It was like knocking suspension. And they kept saying, that's character, characteristics of the car. <laughs> this car, so far, seems all right. Well, it's well, because this car has had the DRC removed. Oh, uh, has it? Uh, so, when the car was bought... Uh, yeah! <laughs> Um, as we released an episode discussing the DRC disasters on these cars, and really, something that's plagued Audis really up until now, like you can still go buy a 2018 Audi RS5 and it's something that can go wrong. And it's a problem that keeps coming back because if you were going to replace, you know, the, the, the setup on each of the wheels or each of the corners even, it can then still happen again because it's the same system, it's the same thing. It was a like what's called like a chronic issue yeah, yeah. for Audi. So a very popular thing to do with this car is to replace it with uh, Bilstein setup. So Alex I was see. quoted around six grand to replace everything at Audi on so this car. Ever. And then Bilstein for unit is about two and a half. So it's now a popular uh, modification. Like people actually, it's something that doesn't harm the value of the car. Because usually if you're advertising an Audi RS product, you're like, yeah, well, I'll change all the suspension, that's going to hurt things. Oh, well, oh road closed, sir. So. Oh, yeah, they're doing the, doing the, it's all right, mate, we go another way. Please do. They're doing the, um, the road surfaces. Well, that's good, because that road is horrific. Even in the SOSFVR, sometimes I'm going to bottom out. Don't be so silly, <laughs> it doesn't bottom out. But, um, so yeah, so we, we've got the bill stones on here. So I would say immediately, Road quality, like like the comfort on road for me in this passenger seat, lovely. Oh, it's much better, mate. It's so nice in here, and that's the thing because we're ten years old. I just feel like in general, just even sporty cars, are, they just weren't brittle. Man. Modern performance cars are so brittle. This thing is super nice. What do you mean they're brittle modern cars? No, modern performance cars. What do you mean? Uh, really? I think suspension can be re like again. I'm going to mention the FSSVR. It's just so. Brittle is the way to describe it. Like, so firm and brittle. This thing, these roads are not good. <laughs> the no. roads around you, not good. But I think UK, the roads are not good full stop. But this car is riding fine. really well. Yeah, like, I agree, yeah. We're, in a, we're in, a, in a comfy place, and that's what I think even a sporty wagon should be. Um, obviously, we haven't talked about the engine too much yet. It's quite quiet and subject at these speeds. Yeah, but I, I remember this being quiet, mate. I, I mean, it was so refined, like you just said earlier, for, for Technology back in the day, it was miles ahead of this. This was Audi's era. Yeah. This was when they were absolutely Peace. smashing it. They 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 wasn't getting anything wrong. Mm. Everything was apart from the suspension. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got quite badly wrong. They, yeah. they really categorically got it wrong. But everything else, like when you know, what is it categorically? Ca cate categorically. Yes. Yes. Geographically. Yeah. <laughs> Geographically. Go on. Yeah, they got it. They, they, you know, they, they got that wrong, but everything, everything else. else, mate, it's like, it's, it's a really, it was a really good car then. I'm yeah. actually driving it now. It's nice. It's not, it's a nice car. It's a nice spec car as well. There's a couple of things. It's got some, it's got most of the options. It hasn't got a roof. Could you got, get a roof? Was a roof a popular well, thing? Because when I've been searching online, very few cars have the roofs. Yeah, um, well, obviously not that popular then, but yeah. my one had a roof and I, I wanted it to have a roof, but it's got the Bang & Olufsen, it's got the camera, it's got the heated seats, it's got the bigger wheels. Uh, I think these are the 20s. I think they come standard with 19s. Okay. Because um, there's not always a load of spec you can do on these cars. Not back then, no. As in uh, folding mirrors, it's got folding mirrors, that would have been an option sure. back then. But yeah, there won't be like... Oh, and they had the wing back seats as well. Yes, you could get the sportiest sort of yeah. bucket seats, couldn't you? Is it fast, this car? No. I mean, it's not really doing anything, is it? Just sort of... Oh, it makes a lovely oh, noise. Oh, my God, the thing. noise is unbelievable. We went nowhere. Like... Were you flat out? <laughs> You're flat out. <laughs> you were flat out? <laughs> flat. <laughs> You're joking. No. <laughs> okay, we're <just> very slow. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but you don't, like, you don't, 
we don't realise the performance difference, like the leaps that they've taken. It's incredible. Okay, I'm doing some Googling on the move here because I'm in the passenger seat. Do you want to know horsepower? Yes. I can tell you that. Go on. About 400, maybe 420. No, 440, I think it and was. And what's the new one? Um, well, not much more, but it's a V6 turbocharger. It's got way more torque. The, the, all the power, this was like the old V8 M3, where all the power is at the top of the revs. But we got to the top and not much happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> so 443 horsepower yes, and damn. 430 newton meters of torque yeah. compared to the replacement, which I'm used to, which is only a little bit more horsepower, 450 horsepower, but 600 newton meters of torque. Yeah. So wow, Tony, you've actually got something right there. Are you, uh, <laughs> how dare you? Because, I mean, yeah, it, it just didn't, but the noise, nothing. <laughs> We are spoiled. We do drive some very fast cars, but we're following what a Toyota Corolla with a GR badge. And on we're it. struggling to keep up. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> wow, that really surprised me. Yeah. And often cars feel faster from the passenger seat because you're out of control. Yeah. It doesn't feel fast over here. No, it doesn't feel fast here either. Wow, I didn't see that coming. But okay. I knew it. I knew all this, mate. You, you, know, well, you know, this is why you're here, Tony. This is why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but if so you do that in the so. M3, in like a modern M3, that's what I mean. It literally sods off. But even the new RS4, like it's just Larry. What's your thought? Because the throttle response again here in a big hunking V8, you said that all the powers at the top of the rev range, it, it must not feel uber sort of responsive. You kind of got to. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but is Nothing. that a good thing? Because it is still a practical family wagon, this, right? That's what the RS was always used to be. They've lost maybe a tad of their appeal in recent years, maybe because of the M3 touring and the RS6 stealing a bit of its thunder. But back in this generation, when it was the show stealer. Yeah. It wasn't about being flat, flat. You just wanted a bit of performance, a bit of noise, yeah, and the badge, yeah. And it is cool in here. Like it did, as I said, they nailed this interior design. Yeah, it is bringing back some memories. This car, because I, when I had this ten years ago, flipping hell, ten years ago, eleven years ago, I really loved this car. Yeah, I loved it. Doesn't and do much wrong. No, no, no. Apart from the fact that we're 10 years on now and everything that's moved on in terms of, and it's not all about performance and speed, mate. Even I'll admit that. You know, you've got, it has got some character this car. It's a little bit numb because it's a four wheel drive Audi, but it sounds cool. It sounds great, I think. Like, it sounds great. I love the looks of it. I think the interior is lovely. I think the, the price bracket makes it so attractive. And as we've just said, it was at a point where Audi would just, we're smashing it, we're ruling the roost because. You know, we've, we speak it about a lot, you know, you've got BMW, Merck and Audi and it sort of ebbs and flows yeah. through generations. But this was their era and you can get some lovely specs. Okay, so audio listeners, Tony's getting a bit leery. He's just switched No, not into... leery. I'm just, he, the, the, what's his name? Adam or Alex? Alex. Alex. Hello, Alex. <laughs> oh, terrible <laughs> names, Alex. Um, Said, put it in dynamic that's mode. That's what he told me. So yeah. that's what you've done. So you switch it into dynamic mode, you flick the big gear lever into the sportier gearbox settings. But what I'm trying to do is, is trying to see if there's a suspension difference. I don't care, there'd be no power difference because there never is. But there's not there's not really any suspension difference, is there? I think you have to select dynamic, don't you? Because you've the car keeps so. taking you out of dynamic. How dare it? Audi drive select dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, in We're it. We're in. We're in it. So But there's not really Is it any quicker? No, it won't be any faster, no chance just sort of not going anywhere yeah but it does make a nice noise it makes like a such a nice noise fun. and hey i am the biggest fan of lots of noise and not needing to go anywhere particularly fast that's what, my whole you're your car that's my vibe <laughs> <laughs> you know apart from the gt3 it makes it feel faster that i tell you one thing that has happened the steering has really firmed up you really firmed up yeah I li i've literally just noticed it's a that. roundabout coming mate oh, bloody really? hell so launching in here a bit, aren't we? There's a van in front of you, mate. Tony, oh. it's not your car. I'm not going fast, but I was li literally I'd go in there fast in my truck. Yeah, but you were like angling it up like a bloody corner at the Nurburgring. No, I wasn't. I'm just going into the round. What is wrong with you? Well, maybe dynamic mode does make this car feel a bit faster <laughs> than from the <laughs> Because I genuinely thought we were about to crash. Uh, um, I think the point is, this is probably a near on perfect performance daily. In terms of from this era and for sub 30k, oh, from this era, for, well, let's say sub 30k, because oh. because I think what we're going to find when we get into the C63 is it's going to be a teeny bit more flawed, but 
have more character. Let me let me throw a curveball for you, young man. Please do. Would you have one of these or a modern 340 BMW Touring? Ooh, because they're probably not dissimilar in price. Very similar. In well, price. I'll tell you what, find somebody to pull over. I'll get behind the wheel. And you'll we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's get myself comfy. Nice thing about a car like this, loads of electric seats. Is it electric? Did you find out if it's an electric? No, manually adjustable steering Manual, wheel. mate. We've got paddles. Yeah, as I say, it's all very familiar. And as I say, for audio listeners, imagining an, an Audi interior from today or five years ago or 10 years ago is the same. It just all works. And it's just, that's what I like. It's so easy to navigate. I know where everything is. It all comes as like second nature, I think. Um, let me put myself back into the... I'm in comfort. Oh, he did it. I, oh, thank you, mate. Because you know that's how I drive. I would live my life. Mate, I like this sitting behind me. <laughs> this is nice. I've got a great view out of the rear, just in terms of like driver positioning. I what? feel like I'm in the right place. My view out the front, my view of the dashboard. This, this is nice. Hold All on. right, well, just Hold drive on. it for a bit and then I want you to answer my question. Okay. I I was, okay, so steering is weird, isn't it? Sort of light and vague. Yeah, I mean... Straight it, away. Yeah, it literally feels like my truck. Yeah, as literally as I just pulls away, I was like, oh, oh, there's the steering wheel attached. Um, but it does firm up when you put it in dynamic. Fine. Okay, so look, we're going to drive and we're going to think, because you're right, modern M340i's, used examples, you can get them around the 30 grand mark. Mm. So the Nagaro edition, one of these, that of course I fell for because I'm a sucker for, oh, it's blue, I should pay 10 grand more, <laughs> was being advertised at 35 grand. So yeah. you could definitely get a, a fairly new. And that is almost the ultimate performance wagon if you're looking, but it's not, it's an M light. It's an M light. So you, there's a big part of this, which is the RS styling, the RS badge. It's saying to me, oh yeah, I drove an RS4. But this is, the, this is very understated, this car. Although it's an RS car, it is very understated, mate. It's not like, look at me, I'm a big, fast performance car. Compared to the modern day RS styling, even the slightly wider rear girth isn't that wide. Like, no. Modern RS, AMG, and M products, uh, you can't miss them. They're like, ah, oh, I'm yeah. a big performance. Yeah, You're right. Big scoops in the bonnets and stuff, and this car just hasn't got that. Especially in this spec, which for audio listeners say is basically black on black with a few chrome bits. It's again yeah. of that era where aluminium pack. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> RS products were denoted with the aluminium. They'll be pack. fuming if we didn't put that in. Yeah. Got all the values in the aluminium pack. Aluminium. <laughs> I'm very encouraged that. Yeah like this which is how i would drive a daily it's this is nice this do you this is nice this is it's, it's just it's just cozy and but the bmw's and... got lovely big screens and it's got nice place to sit and it it probably drives a bit nicer as well it's probably faster it, it's faster it definitely would be faster <laughs> yeah. but as i say it's not an rs4 like that's an iconic badge and also you're comparing new versus old which is never that fair to do the new is always going to be theoretically better the question is would you get do you get more emotion from this i like this era of audi so you know my mum had an an s5 of this generation yeah. with this engine and it was amazing. with this engine then right. she got the v6 afterwards yeah. um i had an s3 and an a6 of this kind of era actually yeah. you know, the a6 was a bit older but you know so I, I think there's a familiarity for me personally yeah fair so i get more of an emotional connection but does this have does this have character and personality in this car not the, really engine sounds good but it's not like yeehaw no i think the c63 we're going to be like yeehaw yeah because that was a different that's a hammerhead of an engine yeah that, you know what i mean where are we going by the way i'm lost oh, cool. Tell me just to turn going, somewhere. Mate. Just keep going straight. Can I not turn oh, onto no. a more interesting road? Um, well, the more interesting roads are back that way. Oh, well, then I should turn around. Okay, then. Um, sizing is quite nice, I would say. Doesn't Compact. Like, yeah, it feels like a good size. Yeah. Which is another attractive win because we know modern cars are getting way too big. It's got privacy glass, this car. I, I don't like that. No? I, I love a clear glass wagon. I think that's a, you know, it's a good... It suggests you live in somewhere wealthy enough that no one's going to nick anything out your boot. The problem is, mate, is that you have children now. Yeah. And clear glass cars with small children is horrific for them. Well, yeah, because actually privacy glass is supposed to be some protection glass. Correct. For, 
people's kids. eyesight. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and their skin. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite pal. I'm very pal. <laughs> <laughs> but just that burble. See, I'm a V8 sucker. We've yeah. spoken about this before. I do just love a V8 and that just constant burble, the awareness that you've got it under your right foot, the ability to wake up that V8. You need it. That does excite <laughs> me. So, okay, so I'm going to go across into the manual mode on the gear selector. Yeah. Put it in gonna, dynamic. And I'm going to swivel, swivel this kind of central selector, which is knurled, nicely knurled, and I get a pop-up on the dash which says Audi Drive Select Dynamic. So then as we come out of the village, all and those All the buttons have are, got a lovely fill to them. Yeah, there. and those nice downshifts are nice, and then just a little... Nothing. Yeah, it's not fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, let's speak relatively. So what, what could you be, if you were in, a Mark V Golf GTI, would this feel fast? Well, it feels faster than a pedal bike. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because like, we spent we, we our time yeah, on yeah, new yeah. modern things. I'm just trying to, if somebody was considering one of these, they might be in, as I say, like a, a two litre Golf or a, is it going to feel, I just don't think it's right. that. All right, let, let's take fast out of it. Who cares about fast? I know it's got to be, part of the package because it's an RS product car, but it is 10 years old, mate. You know, like, this was fast back in the day. Yes. You know, yes, it's just okay. because tech's moved on and so yeah. much, and you've got How fast is down. anyone going? Exactly. You but still I, comfortably do 70 mile an hour in this car. Yeah, okay, fine. It's fine. But still. <laughs> it's really slow. Yeah. <laughs> so you have screwed me a little bit with the road route selection. I want to get oh, yeah, back. So. Go well, back. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I want to get back to the twist to see what happens with the steering. Okay, mate. Because that's the, you know, brisk. You want to be able to be brisk in an RS4. Yeah. And so the, the joy of a car like this is obviously you can carry your family, your dog, all of your stuff, and you can do long distance journeys. It's all practical and comfortable as well. But then you suddenly find yourself on a back road getting to your destination. It's like, oh, I'm going to go into dynamic and have a bit of fun. If, if then it doesn't come together, then it's going to feel like a bit of a shortcoming, I would say. Mm. So we've got to follow this lovely Warburton's bread delivery truck um, for five or ten minutes before we get back to that. But I don't know. I'm I'm very pleased, but a teeny bit a underwhelmed. Teeny bit underwhelmed. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know what I was expecting, but I'm a, just a teeny bit underwhelmed. It's it's uh, it's a lovely car. And maybe the one that, with time, you would grow even fonder and fonder of. But also, is there a risk that after six to nine months, you'd be like, what I else think could you're, I get? you're looking for a car that doesn't exist. You, you want a car that's modern, that looks like this. No, no. I, 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 and I, I'm trying to take myself out of it, which is impossible to do because it's not how I run my business. Oh, look at this, mate. Old Camaro SS, like a 1960s American car. But he's, he's coming, he, he listens to us. <laughs> well, because he's driving an interesting car. He he's coming for us to review it. He's bringing his company out. That's our next rate by ride. I mean, look how amazing that looks, mate. Look at how high its rear end is. Look at those big rear wheels. He's giving it large. Look, a bit of smoke's pouring out of exhaust. The spats break down. Mate, audio, audio listeners, we are following like a cherry red, I'm guessing like a 1967 Camaro SS. Yeah. That is cool, mate. Is it 67? I don't know. I've made that up. <laughs> I drove a 1967 Shelby GT500, and that looks like a similar era. So it's an old G race, 60 something. Um, but you know, I, I'm not trying to say that I personally, you know, I'm looking for this particular car. I just think, as an ownership proposition, we're trying to give some consumer advice here, Tony. Is there a chance that after a bit of time, this would feel a bit dull? Has it got enough about it to charm someone? Do you know why I, uh, I also think people buy this car? Go on. It's because they know they won't lose a ton of money in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's a really big thing because I get answered that, asked that question so much. What can I get into that's got a bit of performance, that's a nice, cool car that's not going to, I'm not going to do my conkers on? This would fit that yeah. deal. Yeah. And I think that is this car's biggest win. Yeah. Because it does do, I, I, I would give it immediately like a solid 8 out of 10. It's missing for me the final 20% to make it a 9 or a 10 out of 10. What's it missing? Just miss a bit more personality. It doesn't need speed, but just a bit more something about it which gives it a little bit of, uh, it's just a bit of edge. Just something that I could. Yeah, it's the James May saying, 
The fizz. The fizz, yeah. It's missing a little bit of fizz. Little Maybe bit you don't fizz. need fizz for a daily, but if we're doing one car garage, I think it's missing a tiny bit of something. It's a bit too Aldi specific or clean. Yeah, color. it's a bit too Germany. A little bit too Germany. But, but 8 out of 10 is a good score. Don't get me wrong, 8 out of 10 is a good score. But, but it, without the fact that you're not going to lose a Conkers, maybe that would drop it to a 7. Do you know what uh, I mean? Like, the value helps it get to the... I think the real big appeal for this car is because it's solid in terms of value. Yeah. Because, mate, things... Like, I think older cars in general, like, things move on so quickly now in automotive, you know, or in just in tech in general. You know, things... Those downshifts do help help with that score though okay here we go right we're on a slightly twistier segment let's see if we can bring this thing to i mean i mean that's way too fast can i just say the red line is over 8,000 rpm and what is so exciting is it takes forever to get there forever. so you just keep revving the thing out okay well this is nice now this is this feels yeah well, this is all right isn't it not really <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is it's winning itself back now and Are this you in is front yeah this is where this car, you start to go, now it's ticking lots of boxes. Because we've done exactly what I just said. Yeah. One off the boring mundane drive into dynamic mode, and we're pushing on, and the car is a delight. It's not frantic, it's not insane. Oh, and those downshifts, mate. I rearrange things, people. It's a nine out of 10. <laughs> it's not a nine. <laughs> no, it's not a nine, but it's an eight and a half. It's an eight and a half now, is it? It's definitely an eight and a half, mate. It's a good, it's, it's just a lovely car. Would you buy one? I think I might. Would you? In the right spec, I would need a slightly larrier spec. I mean, there we go, I'm still, you know, yeah. I, I would want just 100 Newton meters torque more, or 50 Newton meters torque more. You know, a little tune. A bit more power. Just a, just a little bit more, just to pull me down the road a bit more. Yeah. That's all. Because it's a modern world we're living in. Yeah, but. because that's what you're used to. That's exactly. the problem. Yeah, but. Just a tiny bit more. I don't want loads more. Yeah. Just a tiny bit, but it's a very nice thing. Yeah. Yeah, I would want a, I would want something in the spec to bring the excitement. I think that's the thing for me. The car is so good that to make it have a bit more personal, I just want a slightly unique spec. Something, something to look back at and go, oh, that's a nice There we go. As you walk away from Exactly. Yeah. Then I think it would be the whole package for me personally. Yeah, okay. How about you? First time back in one of these in a long time? Um, well, uh, no, I wouldn't buy another one. No. Not, not, not now, mate, because it's not, it's not what I look for. It doesn't do what I look for in a car. Better than you remembered, though? Uh, not better, as, as I remembered. But back, back in the day, as I said, this was the car to have. You know, just like a lot of the modern stuff is now. You know, yeah. that's the go-to car. This was the, this was the car. This was the one to have. Well, let's head back to Gravelwood and swap into the C63 estate <laughs> and see if we can't. Well, well no, I... yeah. <laughs> right, yo. Then we are now in the 2013 C63 estate, and I'm just going to come out and say it straight away. Uh, this immediately feels like a much older interior. This is what I was trying to bang on about with the whole RS4 thing. This dates this car immediately for me. We've got a thousand buttons. We've got old Mercedes style, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, like a telephone keypad. There's all these other buttons on the main dash for the radio, the disc, and the navy like we had on the RS4. But yeah, yeah. They're just- it, it, Climate uh, control buttons. Yeah, it, just, it yeah. just looks a bit more old school. Yeah. But like, when you think as well, like this was the competitive, this is what I'm saying. Audi were miles ahead, mate, with interior design. Yeah. Because this is of the same era, this car. It's 2013 versus 2014. Correct. These were direct rivals. Yeah. And obviously this car had a, a coupe version and a, and a black series version. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and a I saloon. And a saloon, of course. Yeah. But iconic in terms of that situation as, yeah. a, as a shape of C-Class. Um, but yeah, I just feel like we're in a much older era. That RS4 could have been four or five years old yeah this definitely feels 10 years old do you really think the rs4 could have been four or five from an interior design point of view okay purely from an interior design uh, i would i would disagree with that okay. i think this looked old back then okay that, that, i think that's always looked old uh, yeah I, I, yeah i i think this looked old in 2013 i think this looks like 2005 and i think it feels a tad more parts bin 
in some of the buttons, like even the seating controls here on the yeah. doors and the and the window controls, like some of it just doesn't feel. Because what would this car have been new? Similar. Similar money. 60 odd grand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of it, I'm a bit like, I, I don't know if I'd have been disappointed with yeah. some of these elements, but, but I'm way more excited. <laughs> well, you ain't driven it yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good point. I think I'm excited because I haven't really experienced, oh my God, the ride in this is so fun. <laughs> it, it doesn't ride as nice as the no. other. No. But I, it's because I haven't really experienced one of these, and at, at least, you know, not this era of C-Class for a long time. And I like the idea of it, and hunking great, you know, 6.2 V8 and all these kind of things. Yeah. And a friend of mine owns one of these in Hong Kong and loves it. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of excited. But yeah, we're going down the exact same road we went down in the RS4 a moment ago, and we are bouncing around all over the place. Yeah. Um, Tony's now played Jewel uh, with a Hyundai coming up the lane, and you've won. It was, it was weird as well, mate, because... Mercedes out, out of the free, out of the big free Germans, Audi, Mercedes, and BMW, they were always known for the more comfortable wafting car. But around this era, in fact, it was when they bring the C63 coupe out this era, they made it everything really hard. It's the, but the AMG stuff. Yes. Just went insane. Really hard. Yeah, that was a little too firm. Too just, much. A, just a moment ago, I was like, oh my God. And they've kept that in today's stuff yes. as well. Yeah, because we spoke about before that even the new E63, it's just really firm. Really firm. Crashy, as I like to say. You love that phrase. <laughs> I it? love Crashy. that word. Now, this car's got a, a sunroof. So Panoramic got, roof. Oh, oh, it's actually, oh. It's just a sunroof. Just actually, a sunroof. Sorry, mate, I'm coming. Don't worry. Let's close that again. Oh, there we go. But look, you can have it. That's nice. Look at that. Got a little bit more light in the cabin. We and will take that. This is bring back memories now. Literally, that, them parking sensors. They are the worst parking sensors. They literally warn you when you're about to hit something. Uh, anytime. M Mercedes, this era Mercedes, that parking sensor system, you might as well not have them. What, way too sensitive or no, way no. too delayed? Delayed. Oh, okay, so as you're hitting it, it goes, you might be near an object. Yeah, it's too late you've hit it. Okay. <laughs> it's terrible, mate. <laughs> it's the worst. It's fine, so ignore the sensors and just use your eyes. Okay, yeah, yeah, fine. No, just crash into something. Now, oh my God. Yeah. It's That's what I was asking you to do. That feels quick for me as well. Did it feel faster? It, it feels faster straight away. Yeah. It's a bit more, a bit more scary. Well, this is 500 horsepower, this car, I think. And also, because of that firmness of a ride, it just all suddenly feels a bit more intense. Yeah. It's lost a lot of the refinement that the RS4 had. Absolutely, yeah. This feels a bit more silly, a bit more gar Is garish a word? Mm. Larry. Larry, yeah. A bit more Larry, a bit I'm more like sure. hooligan-y. I'm not sure oh, the oh. brakes are very good. OK, hold on a sec. We've got a truck coming. We've got two huge dogs coming. We are giving you an authentic real-world one-take test drive today, people. Both of these cars. How, what, give me, give I'll me tell you what, impression. I'll tell you what I remember from this car, literally straight, straight away as I drove up, I'm not driven it in real anger yet. The gearbox is horrendous on this car. It's so lazy and lethargic, the gearbox on this car, you know? In auto setting or in, even if you in, go onto manual? In auto, the, the double clutch in the... Bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, we went over like a small a bump on, on the road, but yeah. <laughs> The, the gearbox, although it's a double clutch, is a, is a lot better in the Audi. All right, it, it goes up the gears really quick, but I think this Smoother. is an automatic. I don't, this ain't a double clutch, this car. This has got an automatic gearbox in it. So it's just a lot slower in the way it operates in general. Um, and if you remember back in, they were all about <coughs> fuel saving back then. So. It's all low revs and get up to the top gear as soon as you can. But it just doesn't make it very responsive like nothing happens. Well, yeah, when you gave it large, just, you know, at that junction, it yeah. was like, wait, 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 find it. OK, off we go. Yeah, literally, like, nothing really happens. So, and this is definitely faster down the road. The brakes aren't as good. And the brakes weren't that good in the Audi. No, but you... <coughs> the, I, I just think it... I just think it doesn't I don't feel really very... Know what happens here. I don't think it feels very premium. No. Uh, what about if we're going sport? I think so Tony's just playing around with some of the Traction, drive Traction. controls. Nice yeah. noise. A very nice Mate, noise. That gearbox is terrible. That, even in manual mode, there's a delay. 
Oh, I love this not like the noise. It's Frank moves around the road, lot, doesn't it? It feels a lot more like lively Larry, and darty yeah. and Larry. It's like Ferrari. And, yeah, the noise is obviously <laughs> <laughs> the noise is obviously iconically like AMG of this era, yeah. big shouty in your face. But that's what I mean. It feels more like we're going to go and do some burnouts in a Tesco's car park. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Then, then the RS4 was a car that, as we said, it was kind of subtle. It was the kind of thing that you could just scoot around in your family, with your family in. You could do everything. It just did everything. It ticked every box. And that's yeah. why I got that solid score. This feels like, actually, you're buying it to show off. You're buying because you're a bit unhinged. I tell you, I can tell you a word that would sum this car up. Go on. This is a lot more nervous than the Audi. Yes. In terms of the way it behaves on the road, it's not highly strung. It's more highly strung, but like it's weird because it doesn't stop very well. I'm I mean, going to make a dog analogy here. Let's see if this works. Oh, my Tony's giving it large again. Yeah, it definitely feels quicker. Does it? Yeah, feels quicker for me. I'm being forced back into my seat yeah. way more. But I would say that if the RS4 was a German Shepherd, yeah, this would be a Rottweiler. Really? Doberman. I think the German Shepherd, you know, this, it like, you can actually cuddle a German Shepherd, as you know. You can, yeah. It will also kill you. Yeah. This just wants to kill you. Yeah, yeah, maybe. By the way, as you were just talking then, yeah. I asked the paddle three times for a gear then, and only on the third time did it give me it. Which went, <laughs> no, you do not know what you're doing. Yeah. Wow. And that's the up one. Okay, so the interesting thing here is, this car costs less than the RS4. It's about five grand less to buy 18 right. months ago. The cars were bought at the same time. Right. And it has had zero problems to date. Apart uh, from servicing, absolutely no money spent on it. Or but required. that wouldn't surprise me, mate. He said it's been rock solid. Yeah, but, but they never really had too many problems back in the day. So that's the norm, that these things are well, pretty... The, the engine's like bulletproof, mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's... I, I, I honestly, the RS4 drives down the road much better. Than Agreed. I am not. 100%. I'm not enamoured. So far from this, pulling at the petrol station up here because I'm keen to get behind the wheel. But I am immediately all RS4. I was more excited to get in this today. I was like, I'm really intrigued by the CC3. It looks brutish and it's cool and it's going to yeah. be fun and kind of wild. But now I'm like, oh my god, get me back in the RS4. Yeah, I. I I, I was the same. I couldn't wait to get in this car when it's driving because our, our Merc AMG stuff wants to kill you all the while. Yeah, makes you smile. Yeah, and I, I, but it hasn't really made me smile. I'm mm. like annoyed about the gearbox. The brakes are terrible. Um, the engine's obviously a masterpiece. Um, but actually. I think if you if you had to, if you had a gun to my head and said, would you have this or the four liter turbocharged engine? Yeah. Like turbocharged. Yeah. Engine, all oh, day long. The the newer version, the I guess the generation after this C63 estate, I went to the international launch of and loved it. it was pre-drive the world. Yeah. And I asked Mike if we could get a car soon enough, but the production wasn't going to be ready. Yeah. That's how much I enjoyed it. Yeah. This I'm like, mm, a bit of a brew. Yep. Yeah. But but a, it's like a it's like a European. American car. Muscle car. Yeah. That's what it we're, like, we're in that Camaro. Let's swap seats. Come on. In the Camaro. It looks good from the outside though. It looks it looks brutish from the outside. It looks Camaro-esque. Oh, well, how do we do this then? So what so I'm trying to I'm trying to navigate the parking just, brake just here, people. Pull it off and then use your Oh I see. So I've got a I've got a foot parking brake yeah. on the left. Looks like a tiny little sort of pedal high up on the left of the pedal box. And then to release it, I have a lever on the right that I yank. This is the kind of thing where kids, our kids, are going to get into these cars and go, what? Why did they do How that? How do I get the handbrake off? Well, but how, what, like, what was the point in that? Why have I got to push with the foot and release with the hand? <laughs> you know what I mean? It is, you are. Why don't I just have a button? I'm like, well, you're right, actually. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's true, yeah. It's true. Um, seeing as we're at a petrol station, let's talk about fuel economy, because 6.2 oh, litre, V8, not as bad as you think. Uh, two hour drive from the guy's home to us today, 26 mpg. He said yeah. on a brisker drive on local roads, about 16 mpg. Again, I can t I can tell you from experience because I had a coupe one of these, brand new. Yeah. It was horrendous on fuel. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, it is a 6.2 litre V8. Yeah. Completely straight away, completely different driving experience. Just the steering itself. Worse. 
Yes. <laughs> I'm moving the wheel a lot and not a lot is happening. Yeah. So that's odd. And you said that about the RS4. No, but the RS4 is very light. Yeah. This sort of feel, oh, and it's very nervous. It's very squiggly and swerving on the road, yeah. isn't it? A lot more power, immediately more urgent. Yeah. Wants to throw itself down the road. Yeah. But yeah, the ride is annoyingly firm for me because I'm an old man. And as I say, this feels a bit old. Well, mate, again, if I, if you reference a modern, I mean, it is fast. Yeah. Not don't... like, oh my God. This no, is the same old spar as my car. Definitely faster than the RS4. Like, yeah. feels faster yeah, than the yeah, RS4. Yeah. I think what, what I'm going to say, because we're talking about speed a lot, it's reassuringly fast. If you're buying a, an AMG badge product, an RS badge product, or an M product, no matter what its era, you want it to be reassuringly fast. If you say someone, oh, I bought an RS4, well, let's go out for a little lap, and your mate's going, well, how quick is it, mate? I think I'm quicker in my, my Golf R. <laughs> well, this is like- You'd be punch him in the mouth. This feels far, like, this feels Larry, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. But of the three back in the day, when you compare this to the M3, the RS4, and this, this was the fastest yeah. car on a straight line. Fine. By some, it, this was the the more punchier car. Obviously, round a lap, the M car would have been the best, and the Audi sat somewhere in the middle, basically. But uh, all round, I think out of the three, I think the Audi was the nicest car back in the day. So I'm just revving it out just to. I mean, it sounds great. It's simply not dissimilar sound to my F Type. It's that kind of real gnarly V8, and that's nice. Yeah. But there's not much else I like about this, if I'm honest. I, like, in my, at the minute, I'm like at a six out of 10. Oh, if, mate, on it, on it, driving it for five minutes, if I had to choose between the two cars, I'd instantly say RS4, and I don't want the RS4. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, if you, if you, if, if you've got to buy something tomorrow, do you want the C63 estate or do you want the RS4? I'd just say RS4 thing. And it's kind of mad to think about it, because yeah, there you go, I'm trying to engage with the gearbox now to see if it's as slow as you were making out. You know, these this, these were direct rivals. You know, but it feels like this car is a, a different generation, an older generation. It doesn't feel as up to date, as refined. It was as like 2005. Yeah. Yeah, it's just terrible. But, but if you want to engage with the gearbox, just send it an email, mate, it'd be quicker. I mean you say you're trying to change gear? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I, I, but also the feel of the paddles isn't yeah, very yeah. nice. Then you can feel like the car's kind of trying to work it out and trying to decide whether to let let you make that change. Oh, mate, you've just hit the nail on the head. It feels cheap in here. It feels cheap, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it feels cheap in here. And obviously, like, you know, this, this yeah, fine. the dashboard looks cheap and yeah. plasticky. And okay, fine. You know, this was a five grand less than the, the RS4 that we just drove. But I think even then, like, Oh, mate, we're not a fan of this, are we? No. What a surprise. I didn't see that coming. In. I, we're going to get onto the twisty section again in a moment where I gave it large in the RS4, and I'll see if that wins me back round. But I don't think it, it, even if it is fun, it's the breadth, the capability of the RS4 and the levels and the fact that it's a 10-year-old car that I think still feels very modern and very fine and very lovely that puts it way above this thing. And, and what do these do in terms of, holding their value so we know right it's a little now. bit cheaper but okay so they've leveled out yeah. so at 20 25 grand correct fine. fairly solid okay. yeah yeah well, i guess it's got the reliability on its side apart from the dynamic ride control everything else in the audi was okay servicing so, wise what's it uh yearly so more than the audi because the audi this. are biannual. annual yeah yeah okay. this is yearly yeah yearly uh and obviously uh v8 as well so the, the, this car is the engine, mate. This the car is the jackhammer of an engine. Yeah. And that's it. And maybe rarity? I feel like you see less of these, at least on the road, in a state form. Than an RS4? Yeah. 100%. So, because they sell millions of coupes of these. Yes, fair enough. Millions of them. Yeah, because when I see these, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I said, my friend bought one. I was like, oh, yeah, what a good choice. Yeah. But now I'm in it. I'm like, oh. Yeah. You can keep it, mate. <laughs> but please, like, we are spoiled. Oh, take everything we say with a pinch of salt. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because the, someone, like Tim loves this car. Yeah, and we're driving this for, for 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, we're driving this for 10 minutes, just giving a very much initial impression. too long for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say, what do I do now? So Sport Plus, am I in fully manual? I don't know, mate. I, mate, I have no idea what the gearbox is doing. I try, I, I, it I, says D, it's like almost when, let me do. Oh, someone's honking their horn. What was that? <laughs> Sorry, I nearly so crashed. Yeah. Right, let's give it. Oh, is I there a manual setting? I don't know, mate. 
Oh, wow, did you hear how long that took? I know. Okay, I'm going to tell you when I pull the paddle <laughs> and when the thing happens. I feel like we're doing something wrong here. Okay, so like, second gear again. Pull the paddle. <laughs> wow! Wow! But it doesn't feel as confidence inspiring on the no. road, does it? Pull the paddle. Pull the paddle! Exactly. Oh, he did shift. He did shift. Oh! <laughs> Oh, he's going in the wall. <laughs> he's getting like that. Yeah. It's scary, this car, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Not in a good way. It's not. It's not stable, mate. I mean, I literally thought we'd get. <laughs> it does feel like we're kind of floating along the road. A bit. Yeah. That RS4 came alive on this little section of road. Where this thing, I'm like, oh my god, what's it doing? But wait a minute. Wait a minute. The RS4 has been transformed because of that suspension. Fair. It, we have to note it's not factory suspension. Yeah. Like, here, pull paddle. Pull paddle. Pull paddle. Pull paddle. I mean, he doesn't want to do it. No, no, no. It's, 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 it's. Are we sure we're doing that right? Oh, no, no, no. We're idiots. We weren't in the manual setting. Okay. okay. Let's try again. Pull yeah. paddle. It's a little bit better. Yeah. But they're it's still, like, terrible. One more time. Okay, it's a bit better. Okay, fine. That was but awesome. even so. Proof in the pudding that we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. It's definitely still slow. It's yeah. It's definitely still slow. But I think, okay, so what we'll say there is whilst we're idiots and we don't know what we're doing when we're reviewing cars, <laughs> the difference being in that Audi, I say everything was second nature. If I wanted a gear, oh. I, I asked for it. Didn't matter what driving mode we're in, the car acknowledged, applied, like. Yeah. In this thing, it, it, unless you're, you know, you've got to really dial it into all the right places, otherwise they're like, no, you cannot have this, what are you thinking? Yeah. And that's annoying. You know, I, I want to be able to, if I want a gear, I want a gear. Yeah. It shouldn't have to be in manual. Oh, is there a tree? Look, there's a tree across the road. Wow, oh. what an adventurous, exciting day we're having. So, oh, no, you know, listeners, day. we're on our way back to Gravelwood. We've come to a grinding halt behind a Toyota. Oh, my arse really back in that. And the, <laughs> And the driver's gone out to remove a large branch. I mean, it's not a tr I mean, a large branch was an overstatement. A large twig. A large twig. And it was no more than a twig, mate. I'll say thank you to him. He looks like someone goes, oh, bloody hell, bloody twig. He's fuming, the, yeah. He's fuming, bloody twig on the Cab road. driver, Uber. He does look like a... No, I think it's like a local taxi driver. Taxi driver, I think like. you're right, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give him some space. I've got a Tesla right up my bum. Smoke him. I'm going <laughs> to smoke him and see if this manual gear select mode gives us any more joy. So... Pull the paddle. Okay, so this is a bit second, better. First second, a bit better. I pulled for second to third, it didn't give it to me. Yeah. So it's still not good. And yeah. I've just done third to fourth, it's still slow comes up. Yeah. Okay, so we weren't completely wrong. No. So obviously if you want more control, theoretically, you've got to go to manual. But how far they were. Yeah, I'm sorry. Not the car for us, is it? The thing is as well, mate, the even though we wasn't in manual mode. When you pull the paddle, it should theoretically still just work. That's what I mean. And it didn't work. Okay, so here's how I think I'm going to break this down. This is a car if it's a bit of a toy. It's a little bit of like, look, I basically want a sports car, but damn it, I got a German Shepherd. Or damn it, for work, I got to carry a lot of stuff around. The RS4 is a family car, which happens to be very fast. Uh, and and the, the, this is not a family car that's just fast? I think this what? would be an annoying family car in the same way that the F-Pace SPR is. Oh. I, I, I think this is too firm. I think it's too old and cheap and, and stuff internally. And I think, yeah, I, I, like, I don't think it's as refined. I, I, I would disagree, mate. I think oh. they're both exactly the same, okay. but the RS4's better. It's just as simple as that. They're both family cars, fast family cars, but the RS4 is just better than this. That's it. I think mean, you've, pro you've, prob you've probably summed it up better than that, than, than I did. Yeah. We should probably change jobs. <laughs> any good sending cars? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at anything. Anyway, <laughs> that brings an end to this week's episode and the latest instalment of Rate My Ride. Slightly different to last time's SF90 test drive. And back to back, you had two bargain performance cars. We are both picking the RS4. Let us know your thoughts below. Have you lived with one of these C63 estates? Can you win us round with your arguments? And basically, which one would you pick? They didn't offer an M3 Touring of this generation, so we don't have that to compare against. This van is literally trying to drive into me. What do I do here, Tony? Um, go back. It's not my car.
No. Okay, hold on, I'll go back. Oh, I've got a car behind. i got another car behind me. But he's got to go back then. Because I can't get in there, yeah. can I? Well, you can. I but can? Yeah, you can, mate. I Just can. go all the way to the go up there. You'll be all right. You're all right, mate. You're in. Are we sure? That's as far not... as you can go, mate. Yeah, I'm not moving. She just didn't want to go back. No. That's the problem. Okay, we've survived it. Wow, that we was survived. a nerve-wracking way to end the episode, wasn't it? <laughs> I was certainly thinking, what's my insurance? There was actually more room than you thought there, though. Was there? there? Yeah, there was, mate. Okay. I, I, I think you was unnecessary flapping. Well, it's not my car. Exactly. So You're nice. right to be nice. Anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this episode and this installment of Rate My Ride. We'll be back with you for another studio episode next week. Bye-bye. See ya.